his hands. Is he dead? Not yet. Who shot him? I don't know, but whoever it was shot to kill. Why was he cutting our fence? I guess he wanted to get Riker's cattle through here to the creek. But it's run dry. Yeah. Poor fool didn't know that. Shane? This here's Ed Bain's horse. And I guess this is Ed Baines. Where are you taking him? Grafton's. Nearest doctor's two days away from here. I doubt if he's got two hours. Can I come too? Now you take that horse. You go on, tell your mother and your grandfather I won't be home till late. Go on. Tell him very late. Go on, Joey. Mr. Rocker want to hear about Ed getting shot. You tell him to hurry. He wants to see him alive. Ed Baines better live for a long time, Shane, for your sake. Baines had a bad accident. It wasn't an accident. Shot in the gut. Easy. Get that slop off the bar, Sam. Sorry, mister. Yeah. 
Oh, what can I possibly do to help him? You can try, Sam. That's what you can do. You want this, Mr. Grafton? I don't need a knife, Ben. I need a miracle. But you won't be needing me. Stay where you are, Ben. This may hurt him enough to bring him to. If it does, I want you to pour enough whiskey down his throat to knock him out again. Yes, sir. And Baines was not only a good hand, he was a good man. Impossible to replace. Help me get him my back, Ben. How'd you kill him, Shane? Well, if I'd killed him, I'd say it was because he was cutting a fence on the Starrett property. But I can't say that because I didn't kill him. And who did? I don't know. You were there, weren't you? Yeah, I was close by. What were you doing? Riker, I don't think I have to answer your questions. I think you do. You don't take many chances, do you? No. Not when a good man's been killed for nothing. I owe Ted Baines to get some answers. You want the truth? Or you want what you've already decided is the truth? Herb says you killed him. I want to know why you killed him. I'm giving you a chance to explain. After what you've done, consider yourself lucky you ain't killed already. Every man deserves his day in court, Roof. Did he give Ed Baines his day in court? We don't know whether he did or he didn't. All right. We'll make it all nice and legal. We'll let Shane be tried by a jury of his peers. Gentlemen of the jury, be seated. Nice and legal. Kill him once. All right, everybody. Hold it. Sam? 
Sam Grafton, you here? I'm here, Shane. Take their guns. Look, I don't want to get mixed up in this. You want six more corpses? I got a right to kill them all, and if I have to, I will. Take the guns, Grafton. Him too? I'm not carrying one, gents. How about mine, Grafton? Well, that's the last. What do you want me to do with them, Shane? Take them outside and drop them in the rain barrel. Now, Sam. is adjourned. Hey, mister. give you a fair trial if it kills you. Something terrible is going on in town. They're trying Shane for murder. Trying him? Well, we have many court here. That's just it. He ain't got a chance. Who's trying him? Roof Riker and a couple of his hands. So they gotta find him guilty, and they'll hang him just as sure as day follows night. They can't hang Shane, can they? Mary, where are you going? Crafton's. Not alone tonight. You better not, Miss Starrett. Riker's out after blood this time, anybody's blood. I had to sneak out to get out here and tell you. I'm not going to stand here and just... Nobody's going to stand here. We're all going to go out and round up every homesteader in the valley. You and Joey and Ben and me. Not and... me, Mr. Starrett. i got to get back to Grafton's. Riker finds out I was here helping you folks. He'll hang me right along with Shane. I just thought I had to warn you, though. I'm sorry. Well, Ben, you've got to... Marianne. I'll get the Howells and the Swensons, and you get the Lewises and the Torres. And, Joey, you go on over and tell the Johnsons. Tell them what? Tell them to meet us at the far side of Buffalo Creek where that big tree is down. And tell them to get there as fast as possible. Yes, sir. And, Joey, tell them to bring their guns. Yes, sir. I heard two shots, and I hurried over to the gully. When I got there, Ed Baines was dying on the ground and Shane was standing over him. Did you see anybody else? Just a little starry boy. Gravy. Yes, sir, Mr. Riker. You and Ed Baines have been good friends. Yes, sir. That's right. We rode together now in eight years. Arkansas, California, Colorado, Texas. Yeah, we rode together and played cards together, bunked together, got drunk together, got in fights together. I reckon Ed is just about the best friend a man could have. You ask any of these men here. Why, well, you'd find us almost any night playing cards in the bunkhouse one or two o'clock in the morning. Old Ed, he sure did love to play cards. Ain't that right? That's right. That's right. Did you see him before he left my place this morning? <laughs> yes, sir, I sure did. He left there carrying a pair of those big wire cutters. I asked him what he was going to go cut, and he said to, to stare at North Fence by the, by the creek. Did he say who told him to cut it? I did. Them cattle's got to get to water, Mr. Riker. I'll order a thousand fences cut down before I'll see a herd burn up from lack of water. Didn't you stop to think some nester might try to stop you from cutting those fences? Not some nester, Mr. Riker. 
Since it was stirred property, we knew Shane had come sticking his nose in it. Of course, nobody figured he's gonna gun a man down without warning. Why did you pick Ed Baines to cut that fence? How come you didn't cut it yourself? I was riding herd this morning. Besides, Baines volunteered. That's right, Mr. Recker. When I saw the condition of some of those cattle this morning, I rode over to the bunkhouse and asked a couple of hands who wanted to do the job. I explained to them it was no easy job and warned them that Shane was likely not to be riding fence. It might want to cause some trouble. Yeah, but old Ed, he, he piped right up. He said not only was he wanting to go, but he was anxious to go. Did he say why? No, sir, he didn't. But I know why. Been bad blood between him and Shane for a long time now, ever since Shane whipped him in a fight. What was that fight about? The roll of barbed wire. You want to tell us about it? No. Ain't nothing to tell. Not much, anyway. I seen it happen right out here. Shane took a big roll of that barbed wire, was loaded up on a sterret wagon, and old Ed rode up and saw him. And you know Ed, he's an old hand. Boy, the sight of barbed wire just drive him wild. Well, he tried to stop Shane from loading that wire on the wagon. And he even pulled his gun. But Shane, real quick, like he grabbed that wire and he and he cut it. Thought we'd never stop a bleeding. I reckon he's had it in for Shane ever since. And you might say vice versa. Not might, Mr. Riker. I say so. <laughs> Keep right on working up there, is that it? Long as the light holds. Even though there's a chance that Shane's gonna be hanged. He's a professional gunman, a killer. He used to be. Anyway, what's that got to do with this? I think he did kill Baines. You're wrong, Ed. Besides, he's your hide hand, not ours. But he's been fighting your battles and mine and every homesteader's in this valley. He has nothing to gain for himself. And nothing to lose. If I cross Riker, and he decides to wipe me, I got everything to lose. My whole place. You're gonna lose your place anyway unless we stick together. Maybe one day, but not now. And not for a reason like protecting your hide hand against Ruth Riker. If I ever buck Riker, it's gonna be for me and mine. Nobody else, Tom. You're as good as wiped out right now, Ed. Tom. Maybe if you get Swinson and Gunderson and some of the others to go with you, I'll come along. They already turned me down. But you can't leave a man to die like that. I can't send my man out to die either. You could always find another hired hand, Mrs. Sterrett. Husbands don't come that easy. Mr. Tari, I'm begging you. Myra, maybe if the whole bunch of us got together, we could... Get shot down like a pack of dogs instead of like one dog at a time. Riker's got gunmen with him. What have we got? Farmers who belong behind plows, not guns. But the only help we've had against Riker for a long time has been Shane. With him gone, Riker will drive us all out. You can see that, can't you, Mr. Tari? I'm trying not to, but... Mrs. Sterrett! I want you to leave my house without saying another word. Myra! No, no more talking. You're starting to get convinced. Just leave! I'm sorry to have bothered you. Just the way you're fighting for your man's life. That's the way I'm fighting for his. I'm fighting for his, too. Only you won't realize it until it's all too late. If you want my real opinion, I think Shane killed that man. After all, he used to be a gunman by trade.
got no choice but to hang him. Look at the evidence we got. Harv here, he saw Shane standing over Ed Baines's body. All right. If Shane were to talk, he would say that he caught Ed cutting a steric wire. But why was he cutting that wire? To save a herd of cattle that was dying of thirst. Is that a reason to sneak up on a man and murder him? A gravy, yeah. He tells us how Shane and Ed were enemies. So we know that Shane was just waiting for a chance to, to, to jump on him. And how come? How come that Shane ain't saying one single word to deny it? Shane, won't you please say something in your defense? Yeah, I'm innocent. And that's your whole defense. It's also the whole truth. Well, let the jury decide that. All those who vote guilty, raise your hand. And I vote guilty. That makes it unanimous. I didn't vote, Riker. Well, all right, Grafton. Let's say you're the judge, and judges don't get to vote. You can't do this. You're committing murder. An eye for an eye, that's the law. We're gonna hang you, Shane. And it's just like I said. Nice and legal. No, it's not nice, and it's not legal. Not as nice and as legal as when the law comes and hangs you for doing it. Hangs me for what? Getting rid of a professional killer? They'll thank me for it. Ben? Where you been all this time? Me? You sneaked out of here and rode over to the stairs to warn them what's going on? Well, yes, sir. I warned them. I don't think Shane should yeah, be... Yeah, now what are they gonna do? Round up the rest of the homesteaders, is that it? Yes, sir. They're all gonna come over here and try to stop us from stringing them up. Something like that, yes, sir. Ben. Pour yourself a drink. Yes, sir. You hear that, men? All these homesteaders are coming in here looking for a fight. We're gonna oblige them, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. All right, Sam, give us some guns and ammunition and rifles. I'll do no such thing. All right, men, take them. I'm paying for them. You're going too far now, Riker. You're heading for real trouble. Trouble? I'm getting rid of Shane and those homesteaders in one afternoon. It's been a coming. This might be the day. me down, every blessed one of them. How about you? I don't know what's wrong with people. They're scared. Oh, that's no excuse. I'm not trying to excuse them. I'm just trying to understand them. Why? They're not worth it. Riker keeps saying the homesteaders are like a bunch of scared rabbits. Well, maybe he's right. Tom, no. You can't get Shane out all by yourself. Just stand here talking about it isn't going to help him any. Maybe I could ride in a graft and sneak around the back. Tom, stop it. Honey, we've got to do something. I know, but I don't know what it is. You're not giving up, are you? We're all the Shane's got left in this world. If we let him down, he's as good as dead. I know. I'm just standing here trying to think of what to do. Maybe if I went in and saw Riker, we could work out some kind of deal. What do you got to bargain with? Two old plow horses, goat, eighty dollars in that cash jar. And this farm. If Riker thinks that Shane really killed that man, he won't bargain even for this farm. But he might let him out until you get back from Laramie with the sheriff. Might work. Gotta work.
found it. Good. I'll be ready to go in a minute. Tom. Thanks, honey. Huh. What? Oh, I was just thinking. Last time I saw Shane, he was hitching up the team. He and Joey were riding out to check the fences. It's about as normal a thing as a man can do. A few hours later, he's close to being hung. Hurry. Honey, you've only really been in love with two men in your whole life. I'm going to try and see that you don't lose them both. Still nothing? Not a soul, Mr. Riker. I don't see why we can't hang him right now. Because you always catch bigger fish with live bait. If he were dead, do you think we'd get more than one or two of them sod busters out here to square things up? Something's on the road. How many? It's just one. It's too far away to see who it is. Might be a decoy. Look, go and alert every one of our men. Tell them not to shoot and give away their position till we find out what those sod busters have in mind. Take him upstairs. Don't let anyone get near him. You know, Riker, if I was afraid of me as you are, I'd kill me right now. <laughs> well, I couldn't shoot a man who's unarmed. Have to be a professional killer to do that. Unfortunately, I don't have the stomach for it that you do. Move. here, boy. I came to see Shane. What for? He's my friend. Come alone? Yes, sir. Where's your mother and your grandfather? I don't know. I thought they'd be here by now. No, not yet. Would you help me down, please? Why? I told you I want to see Shane. What do you got there? Something for Shane to eat. That's his slicker, ain't it? Yes, sir. He always carries his pistol in there. See? It was just like I told you, Mr. Riker. Just something to eat. Got a visit. I let him through. Yes, sir. He's up there. You got five minutes. Shane, somebody to see you. Joy. Hello, Shane. Did your mother know you're here? She wasn't home, so I couldn't tell her. Where is she? She and Grandpa are out trying to round up all the neighbors to come here and save you. How'd you get this past Riker? Oh, 
I thought it was my gun. That's just what Mr. Riker thought. And that's why I did this. You had no right to take a chance like this. I heard they were going to hang you. Well, it looked like they might. Till this minute. Then you're not mad at me for bringing it? No, Joey. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the rest of us for making it necessary for you to bring it. But you go on. What are you going to do? I'm going to try to escape. Where to? I don't know yet. You go on. Will I ever see you again? I don't know. I sure hope so. Be careful and come back soon. yourself, Joey, because you're the very best. I'm sending the boy out. Goodbye, Joey. Joey! Mom! Well, what are you doing here? I came to see Shane, and I was just going, and I think you better come with me. Your mother just got here. She says she has something important to say to me. My father-in-law's gone to get the United States Marshal. So no harm had better come to Shane unless you're prepared to answer to the government. Let's go, Mom. Joey, will you please be quiet? Shane didn't murder anyone. I guess you don't know him too well. Or you know that murdering used to be his profession. That's a lie. What else do you call a hired gun but a murderer? I'll go on by myself, Mom. Joey, you stay right here with me. But, Mom... Stop it. Gave you the right to take the law into your own hands. The same thing that gave Shane the right to kill Ed Baines, no more, no less. Besides, my men won't wait four days for the marshal to get here. Why not? They know Shane. You know, so long as he's alive up there, none of them is safe. Then let him go until the marshal gets here to take him to trial. Ah, <sighs> uh, even you don't believe that Shane's gonna wait four days for the marshal to take him back to trial and certain conviction. Let's go, Mom. Joey, will you please be quiet? I'll guarantee that Shane won't run away. You'll guarantee? With what? Your word? No, Mr. Riker. With something much more precious to you than that. The deed to my land. Afton, I want you to witness this. Miss Starrett, I don't think that you should... Please, Mr. Grafton. Put it in the vault. Shane didn't shoot that man today. I was with him. He didn't even have his gun. Gravy. Yes, sir. Light him up.
start, you lose. I say goodbye to your mother. Well, maybe you won't have to say goodbye after all. Because now that we have no place to live, we can go with you. Joey, stop it. What's he talking about? Nothing. It's all right. Well, Mom made a bet with Riker. She bet this whole place that you wouldn't run away. She lost the bet. Joey, it's getting very late. Will you please go to bed? But I haven't even asked Shane how he escaped from the upstairs room and grabbed him yet. But I suppose I can ask him later, huh? You had no right to do that. I'm sorry. I only wanted to help. I didn't ask for your help. No, you never do. You only want to give help, not receive it. I'll unhitch the horses. No, you've got to go. I'm not going to let you give up this place for my sake. And I'm not going to let you give up your life for mine. I better try to find out who really did kill Ed Baines. Big son of a gun, all right. Where did it come from? It's from a rifle, not a handgun. 50 caliber sharps, long rifle, I know. I meant, where did you get it? I took it out of a fence post where Ed Baines was killed. He was shot with the same kind of bullet. That's mighty strange. Yeah, it's not a farmer's gun. It's not a common's either. But somebody in this valley has one. I figure he'd have to get his ammunition from you. That's right. That's what's so strange. What's so strange, Sam? The only man in the valley who owned a big 50 was Ed Baines. 
You're going to tell me that Ed Bain shot himself with his own rifle from 100 yards away? No. You're going to tell me if Ed Bain's owned a Sharps 50. Harv? Yeah, Ed owned one. Go down the house. Bring it over. I can't. Mr. Reichert's gone. Since when? Well, that's hard to say. We didn't notice it was missing until late this afternoon. This is everything Ed Bain's left in the world. Mind if I take this for a couple of days? Why? Maybe something in it. Something that'll give me an idea. Papers or letters. Maybe Ed Baines stole somebody's money. Or his horse. His wife. You know, Shane, you had a lot of guts coming here after what happened today. Any one of my men could have shot you on sight. They could have tried. But then you would have shot them for losing it at Starrett Farm. Take the bag. Not a chance in a million that you're gonna find anything. Well, when you got no choice, those aren't bad odds. Thanks. This range, it's got to be a big 50. What's happening? Joey, get down. Now get back in there. Who is it, Mom? I don't know, but you've got to help us. Yes, ma'am. How? Will you get under the bed and stay there? Will you do that for me? Yes, ma'am. Are you all right? Yes, ma'am. Then I'll go help Shane. He's out of range of this thing. Where's that rifle that used to hang there? I insisted Tom take it with him to Laramie. I'm sorry. So am I. Why is he trying to kill us? I don't know. Unless he thinks there's something in that bag that's gonna give him away. Is there? That's as far as I can figure out. He's coming closer. Much closer. I still can't tell who it is. He's still out of range. What are you gonna do? Something I've never done before. Ask for help. I want you to take that gun and keep firing out this window. Where are you going? I'm going to go out the back window and see if I can get close enough to hit him with this. Come back.
you noticed? He's not shooting at us anymore. Did you? I thought Ed Baines was your friend. He was. So why did you shoot him? Like I told you, we played a lot of cards. Every night. He was beating me something fierce. All the time. I owed him over $1,200 in gambling debts, and that's a lot of money. And he was dunning me for it. But you ought to know it's... It's easier to kill a man than it is to pay him $1,200. Why, he made me sign IOUs, and he was my best friend. And you were afraid he might have put those IOUs in that duffel bag I took. Well, he didn't. Well, I don't reckon it matters much. I done told you too much to let you live. Like Ed Bain. He always kept Ace up his sleeve, too. 